So you clicked on this uh, video to see how you can uh, replace the sky in your photo. And I will show you this right now in Photoshop and in Lightroom. So let's jump in. So the first thing I will do is add a preset because I think that's a really nice startup point. But by using this preset, it's uh, clear that I need to, to make some color adjustments first. And I will adjust the, the temperature because it's uh, way too blue for me. And I found when I'm editing photos where I have a subject in the middle that I want to be in focus and have uh, be the brightest spot and the, the area around it, I want it to be a little bit more dark and moody. The best way for me to do this is by setting the exposure for the subject and then making a radial mask where I will darken the area around the, the subject. So that is uh, what I'm doing now. And then because I want the horizon and the castle in the horizon to be uh, not blown out, just like the, the sky, I'm going to make another radial mask over here and uh, try to, to pull back some details in the horizon. And I don't want the rocks here on the right to, to be a part of the mask, so I will mask them out by holding ALT while using the brush inside the radial mask. Then I will paint away the, the mask, which is the, the red color you can see now. And by the way, if you want the, the mask to appear, the area that is in the mask, you have to press O and it will show you the, the red area and you can see what's inside the, the mask. And I will add uh, another mask, or a third mask, on my boy because I think he could be a little bit more in the light especially uh, the back of him, so, uh, so I'll add a mask here and I will bump up the shadows a bit so we can see him even more and he will uh, pop a bit more out of the, the photo. And then I'm using a really cheap uh, lens here, 24mm, that has a lot of distortion, so I will use the, the lens profile in Lightroom and you can see when I add the, the profile it takes away a lot of the vignetting also, so I will add in that by using gradient masks. So I will add in the shadows by using gradient masks again, and also this way it's much easier for me to control how uh, moody and dark I want the picture to be. This is the before, and this is the after. It's already looking a lot better, but I think I can adjust the color temperature just a little bit. And I mean, by now it's uh, more or less uh, a matter of preference because I have a really good basic now, but I would just adjust the, the sliders here and there. But I could I could leave the picture as it is by now. But yeah, the thing I'm I'm going to do now is I will add a little mask over on the rock formation because I think it's a bit too dark. If you look on the left side in this area of the the picture, it is uh, quite lit up by the sun, and I think the the rock formation is a bit too dark. So I will add in a bit of light by using the the radial mask. And I just think it uh, works better, but it's just a preference. You could leave it out, um, but I will undo the mask so you can see for yourself the, the change I did. Just no easy way to do it, so I will delete the mask. This is the before, and then I will undo the delete, and you can see how it looks now. I think this is uh, better because, yeah, it's just making the, the picture a bit more complete. and. Um, yeah, just moving the, the, the shadow sides a little bit. So, yeah, to me, this is uh, really fine. It 
So now we will head over to Lightroom by clicking the picture and choose with the right mouse button and choose edit in Photoshop and we will head over to Photoshop and we will replace the sky. And this is really easy now in the new Photoshop version because you can actually do it with the click of uh, a button. So you will go to the top to edit and replace sky and it will take you to this new screen where I already chose a sky I think will work with this picture but you can use the presets in Photoshop or use your own sky. Then you have these uh, top five sliders that will change the settings of the sky and they all make minor adjustments so you have to, to move them around to see what they do and how they fit the lighting for you, the picture. And um, yeah, you can mess around with the, the lighting and also how much of the, the sky and the foreground will melt together. And there's only one way to get this uh, right and that's by uh, moving the sliders up and down until you, you get to a point that you like. And you can change the, the temperature of the sky as well. You can see you can get it really blue and that's way too much. And I think you have, for my picture here I need a little bit more of yellow. But this will all depend on the picture that you are trying to replace the sky. And you can move the sky as well, just simply by clicking on it and, and moving it. And there's also a slider where you can scale the the sky if you want uh, it to look in a different way or if you want a certain portion of your, the sky picture to to be in your new picture but i will just uh, leave it as it is and the button part will change the the lighting or the settings for the foreground so you can match the foreground and the background as much as uh, possible and this is of course really important that you get them to look as close as possible because you want it to look so realistic that everyone who will see this picture will think that this is a real picture and not a photoshop edit so i'm satisfied now and the good thing by using this uh, sky replacement is that afterwards when you click ok photoshop have made all the layers with the different um, settings on it and you can change the values if you think that something is off. So for instance, this is the layer for the foreground color. And I can change the, the curves if I would have liked to. And this is the foreground lighting. And this is the sky. And also you can see the mask, so you can correct the mask if something is off. And this is for the sky, the temperature and the And the exposure and you can see you can go more crazy here because you get a bit more sliders and also with the, the lighting you can change the contrast as well if you like to but i'm not going to do anything i'm just going to leave it as it is because i am quite satisfied with my picture and here you can see the before and after because the photoshop have made the the sky replacement into a group as i said i am satisfied now so what we will do is save the, the picture. I'm just going to press Ctrl S and it will save the picture. And uh, I can close down Photoshop when it's done. And the picture will now be as a TIFF file with all the edits in Lightroom. This is the before with the, without the sky replacement. And with this is the, the first picture without any edits and this is with my edits and the sky replacement and I'm really satisfied with this picture. I think it's looking really good and it will definitely have a, a spot in my Instagram. So yeah, the last thing I'm going to do because I want to put it on Instagram is uh, make the 4x5 crop. So I will press R on the keyboard and it will open up the crop tool 
and uh, we will choose 4x5 so we will be Instagram ready and I will try to set it up in a, in a decent way and I think this is really good a bit of foreground and uh, a lot of the background and my kit and uh, yeah you can find this picture on my Instagram and I hope you will come and see it and uh, perhaps leave a like and a comment if you found this uh, tutorial helpful so this was a really easy way to uh, to change the sky in your uh, in your photo in Photoshop and also a small uh, color grade in Lightroom. I hope you could use uh, this uh, small tutorial and if you uh, could I would appreciate if you would leave uh, a like and also if you would uh, consider subscribing to this channel. Anyway, I will see you really soon in another video. Bye.